Hello everybody and thank you for taking the time to join me. Uh, I was reading the book of Enoch um, again today for those of you that follow my work and are familiar with the, the radio programs that I do. You know that my ninth book which I published this past September uh, 2015 uh, is entitled The Flat Earth as Key to Decrypt the Book of Enoch. And in that book I I cover a portion of the Book of Enoch called The Courses of the Heavenly Luminaries, which describes in 14 chapters the description, detailed description, of the movements of both the sun and the moon and through the six gates of heaven which lie between both tropics, the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. Having read this text many times previously, ever since I was 18 years old, I learned that in reading this portion of the book of Enoch, I was never able to make sense of it when I had read it previously, um, and I had done so many times since I was 18 years old. But having since come to the Flat Earth Revelation, I was able to look at the that portion of the text and I realized that what Enoch was talking about with the motions, the movements of the sun and the moon above the circle, the flat circle of the earth, was an application of the earth as flat circular plane. And unless you understand it that way, you're, you won't never be able to make sense of the material. And so anyways, I'm currently working on a follow-up. I've got so much material that I decided I'm going to, not only am I going to break up the 400 page book that I previously published because it's quite a lot of material, but I'm going to add a whole nother section um, uh, and I'm going to publish, I'm going to break that one up into three sections and then I'm going to add a fourth section because I know that people are intimidated by books that are over 300 pages and that even if the material is incredible as far as revelation they because they don't like really thick books and too much information they like to only purchase and will only support somebody that says everything that they need to in about 120 pages and so I made that decision today but anyways, uh, in looking and rereading the other aspects and other portions of the Book of Enoch, I was led to a couple of things which I want to share really quick in this video. One of them is chapter 53, verse 7, which says, And these mountains shall become flat, like earth, in the presence of his righteousness, and the hills shall become like a fountain of water. And the righteous ones shall have rest from the oppression of sinners. The book of Enoch also speaks about how the text and the secrets that he reveals within the chapters of um, this Enoch 1 will not be understood until later. And that this knowledge will be lost, forbidden, forgotten, hidden, and that the Most High would bring it to light at a very distant generation and he says in chapter 1 verse 2 from them I heard all things and understood what I saw that which will not take place in this generation but in a generation which is to succeed at a distant period on account of the elect now the another thing which I had discovered in while studying and rereading the other chapters and other portions um, of the book of Enoch was chapter 55 verse 2 where it says this and Yahweh swore by his own great name that from henceforth he would not do as he had done to all who live upon the earth and he said I shall put up a sign in the heavens and it shall become a symbol of faith between me and them forever as long as heaven is above the earth which is in accordance with my command now what's interesting about this particular text is because it absolutely fits and the description of not only the 
account of creation in Genesis chapter 1, but also the vision uh, that is described in Isaiah chapter 40 of the circle of the earth and the heavens spread out as a curtain above it, and that these two things together form the shape of a tabernacle or a tent, which another, and I covered this in great detail in my other uh, in the book that I've already released, but in chapter 74 of the book of Enoch, it says this, And the days Uriel showed me, the angel whom the Lord of glory appointed over all the luminaries of heaven, in heaven, and in the world, that they might rule in the face of the sky, and appearing over the earth, become conductors of the days and nights, the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the ministers of heaven, which make their circuit with all the chariots of heaven. This particular passage, as I opened in my book, I opened with Psalms 19, which describes the movement of the sun above the circle of the earth, which again fits precisely with what I'm talking about here. And in that, the specific passage that I'm talking about, well, you can read Psalms 19, 1 through 6. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the ends of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. And once you understand how the sun and the moon move above the azimuthal equidistant projection map, which is a map that is shown as emblem on the United Nations flag, and it just shows all the continents of the earth situated in singular circular embrace around the North Pole as center of this map once you understand that the sun and the moon move in circuit in clockwise fashion above the circle of the earth then you understand how this particular passage his going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof you understand how it this passage applies to the circuit of the sun and the other day, which um, I, I was reading Ecclesiastes, and there was a passage which is really interesting in it, which also applies to this particular passage, this one singular scripture, and it says this, The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. When you understand that the sun rising and the sun going down, setting, that all that is, because the sun actually never dips down below the horizon, but it actually just moves in circle above the face of the earth, which is what it says in Enoch chapter 74, then you understand that the sun setting and rising is just it moving and reaching the vanishing point and that the way that the vanishing point works and the laws of perspective work is that when it enters our field of vision then we see the sun seemingly appear to rise up from the horizon And the reason it does so is because it was so far away from us that it is it disappears 
as a small point on the horizon, but that as it nears us, it seems to rise into the sky and above the earth. And then as it sets, or when it seems to be going down on the horizon, it's just the sun moving so far away from us that it reaches again, nearing the horizon, it reaches a, a distance to where it actually disappears from our field of view. And the naked eye is not able to see it um, past that particular distance. And so this causes the sun to seem as is, as if it is dipping below the horizon and disappearing from view. And there's a perfect illustration of this uh, during what is called the phenomena of the midnight sun above the Arctic regions, specifically when the sun is above the Tropic of Cancer for what is the shortest night and the longest day of the year. And if you understand how the sun, the its circuit narrows as it moves from the Tropic of Capricorn and moves, transitions closer and closer to the Tropic of Cancer, that when it is above the Tropic of Cancer, its circuit is the smallest and its tightest revolution of any part of the year. And during this midnight sun, you can see the sun in full trajectory um, remain above the horizon, never dipping below the horizon for more than three or four days at a time. And so you'll see it rise up in the east and then move towards the west and then move back to the north and then move back to the east and then continue in circuit in this manner for three full days. And so this again verifies that we do not live on a, um, a, a planet which is spinning on its axis once every 24 hours and orbiting around the sun because this phenomena would only be able to be witnessed if you were at the exact North Pole. And then, it, you know, the, the way that you see it, the sun would always be pointed in one direction. It would never move in circle in every part of the horizon in the manner that it does, um, as is described here in Ecclesiastes and also in Psalms 19. And there's another portion of the text that I just recently discovered that I'd like to share. In Ecclesiastes, in looking at the, the movement and understanding the movement of the sun in this manner, if you look up, like if you go to a website where it allows you to search out words in the King James Version of the Bible, and you search out the words under the sun, you will see that this particular passage comes up 29 times in the book of Ecclesiastes, which again is confirmation of what I just read that I just discovered today, chapter 55. And I shall put up a sign in the heavens and it shall become a symbol of faith between me and them forever, as long as heaven is above the earth which again, the firmament is fitted above the flat circle of the earth. And that's why Isaiah describes the heavens and the foundation of the earth together as being in the shape of a tabernacle or the shape of a tent, which a lot of people, they always send me Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22 to verify that the earth is a globe. But that's not what it says, and I've covered this in many other shows. You have to use the Strong's Concordance and go and look at the actual Hebrew uh, in order to interpret the, these particular passages, which I will do in the next video.